some of the like manufacturing technologies that maybe you don't get a chance to talk about just yet on the channel around the automotive space or in general, maybe something you see on the horizon uh, that you find in particular has like a lot of potential or is really of interest to you? Well, uh, the big thing for me is, um, big thing for me is, uh, is um, um, solid state batteries. I'd really like to find out more about that. Um, the other thing is I'm, I'm really interested in electric motor technology. And um, um, I, uh, I was talking to a guy named, um, um, named uh, Tracy uh, McSherry, and he has, um, he has a new wheel motor uh, technology that I'm, I'm very interested in. Um, and it, it does things in a unique way. He uses a hull back array different than anybody else I've ever seen uses it. And, uh, and it looks like it has some real legs. So um, those are the, those are two things that I'm, I'm really, really kind of interested. The other thing that I'm kind of interested in is um, how to build a body <clears throat> um, out of carbon fiber that doesn't put you in a poorhouse. Um, so I know that, um, I know that the I-5 and the I-7 which didn't get built. Um, he used uh, some pretty fancy new uh, techniques and technologies, and um, and I know that uh, that they they made their product so strong that they they basically didn't have to have anything except for the uh, except for the floor of the product. That that that's very interesting to me. I, I want to know how to do that kind of uh, that kind of technology. Um, I know that the crossover point for steel, aluminum, and carbon fiber, I know exactly where that is. And uh, because it's cheaper to um, buy tooling for carbon fiber, um, at least for the forming uh, of carbon fiber, I know that that's cheaper uh, until you get to about uh, 20, 30,000 vehicles a year. Then after that, uh, aluminum takes over, and then after that, it's steel. You can't find anything cheaper than that. But I think that most of the cars are going to be coming out uh, late in, in the future at around somewhere between twenty and fifty thousand a year. After that, I think that uh, those three technologies, are, as far as automotive is concerned, they're the things that I am the most interested in. But I'm also interested in something else that. Um, that uh, <clears throat> some people might find um, unaccept socially unacceptable. But I, I'm really interested in is um, micro nuclear reactors and, uh, and also fusion. Now there's a lot of us have been watching what was going on in France with fusion. Um, they can put in um, say uh, a kilowatt of power and they get um, uh, six or seven kilowatts back. Now, MIT is saying that they're gonna be able to put one kilowatt of power in and they get 10 kilowatts back. That's, uh, that's pretty good stuff. I'm very interested in that. Um, and then we start looking at um, other propulsion systems when you get into space. So most people don't wanna to hear too much about that because they think it's all, you know, crap. But yeah, there's there's lots of stuff that uh, that happens that you can do right now that could uh, once you get into space you could use and uh, and it's just not ion propulsion. I mean that you got to have a tremendous amount of speed and then ion propulsion can keep you at that speed, but to get there it take you a million years. But I'm looking at is more directed energy kind of products, things that we use in defense contracts now that I think uh, could help us with propulsion and space in the, space in the future. Um, I, I, there's a lot of things that I, uh, that catch my attention. Could you real briefly elaborate what that is as far as uh, the military aspects for space exploration? Well, it's uh, right now, when you talk about directed energy weapons, that's, uh, that's using, um, that's using microwaves or lasers or things like that to, um, repel an army. Um, but I believe uh, that we can, um, we can use that same technology 
in space to rapidly propulse um, whatever spacecraft you've got. As long as you're out of the atmosphere, away from Earth, right. I think uh, I think we could come up with things that could make a big difference as far as um, as far as moving from um, say orbit around the Earth to Mars or wherever you wanted to go. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to visit our website, connectingthegrid.com. There you can listen to our podcasts, contact us about sponsorship, or even be a guest on Grid Connections. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a positive rating on your favorite podcast or video streaming service. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out a lot too. Thank you again, and I look forward to us learning more together soon.